said, if you believe in your heart, God raised the dead, thou shalt be saved. So you can't just not believe in the resurrection and become a Christian. You've got to believe that. Now, the reason we believe in the resurrection is because as he arose from the dead, now get this, as he was resurrected and you get born again, your spirit's resurrected. And then you shall be resurrected bodily one day in that rapture of the church. So Carter, you like the rapture? About the rapture of the church will happen one day. Could happen any time. You're right to be uh, ready for that. But now Christ, he says. See, he goes on in chapter 15 uh, of kind of using a debate tactic where he's trying to say, well, if Christ isn't raised and all that. But here he says, the final point, verse 20, but now Christ is risen from the dead. And has become the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep, those who have died. For since by man came death, by man also came the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all died, even so in Christ all shall be made alive. But each one in his own order. Christ the first fruits, afterward those who are Christ that is coming. Now, what John's referring to last week was that verse. That person never understood until that point about Christ being the second Adam. The first Adam brought death. The second Adam, Jesus, brought life. The first Adam brought sin. The second Adam brought forgiveness. And what he's saying here is that no one else in history of mankind has been resurrected. And that resurrection is essential for salvation. But now Christ is risen from the dead and has become the first fruit. Now what that means is when he was glorified, body and soul, he became the first resurrected person of all that are going to follow him. And then those that also that have died in him shall be resurrected one day also. They're called the fallen asleep or, or asleep in other words for death there. <clears throat> so here we here we are and we say okay the, the resurrection is essential. Now, if he didn't have the resurrection, only had the death and burial, there'd be nothing to differentiate Christ from anybody else. What would make the difference? Okay, he went to the cross, he was buried. Means have, have died and been buried. What's the difference? The resurrection. Because Christ is resurrected, he came over death, over the grave over hell and died for us and not only died but was resurrected showing he was God only God could do that people say what about miracles listen if God can raise Christ from the dead everything else is secondary and if we are born again we're born again in that resurrection right now if you're a born again child of God inside you where the spirit lives you're already born again you're already glorified the flesh is just waiting to catch up to a big glorified body in so. Finally. The gospel of Christ. His death where He shed His blood to forgive our sin. We had a sin problem He wiped out. I could not forgive myself. I could not bring enough goats to the temple to forgive my sin and bring my salvation. I could bring a truckload of pigeons. It wouldn't be enough to save old Jim Shaw. So, and so I had to have that ultimate sacrifice on the cross to pay my sin debt to be my atonement for my life. And so that death's where Christ went to the cross for me. It was personal. He died for me personally. He died for you personally. He died for you. No matter if anybody else ever lived, he died for you. When he walked that road to Calvary and endured that pain, that shame, that suffering, it was for you and me personally. It's a personal thing, and we ought to be offended when the world talks badly about Jesus. Where is the offense? Where is the rebuke? Nowadays, they simply want us to shut up and be quiet and sit over in a corner. And if, if, if you're nice, to let you worship your God, but not too publicly. Now I'm telling you, that's where we are, that's where we're heading. Now, that's a repeat of history. Nothing new, just the same old devil's plan. What happens is when people have taken up, when Christian people have taken up, they'll come back to God in a strong way. And they'll say, we've had enough of this, we're tired of this, it's a lie, it's not what God would have. 
We want to have a country and a world and a nation that loves and serves Christ. Now I'm telling you what, we're going to get so bad in the future, I believe that will happen. Now, he's buried. I'm talking about buried in a, a tomb, borrowed tomb, Joseph Arimathea, gave the tomb up, and it's concreted in. Concreted in. When they rolled that big two-ton stone in front of that, that burial hole, they just didn't leave that two-ton two -ton stone there. They put concrete around it. Which means you couldn't move the stone without a bunch of men. And then when you see men in that stone, you couldn't move it then because it was concrete, solid concrete. Herod said, we are through with that man. Sanhedrin said, we're finally through with that man. Judas probably said, before he killed himself, I'm glad I got over that man. So many others that, that had followed him and saw the miracles that booed him and jeered for him at the cross. Well, finally we're through with that. God calls all problems. Isn't it amazing? And it's always the godly person that's accused of creating the problem. It is never God who creates the problem. It's those that reject God who create the problem. We're through with this Jesus. Not only is he dead, we saw him die. He's been buried. He is sealed in that tomb with that stone and that concrete and the guards outside. Nobody can take him out. Nobody can steal his body. He's a done deal. Mm -hmm. Let me figure out about one person. God. When man says no, God says yes. And on that first East Sunday morning, when the sun came up, the sun came up. And that rattling began to happen. And that body was transformed and glorified and slipped through those falls. And that stone rolled away because there's no power on earth more powerful than God. The hurricanes you just had have been so destructive, so powerful. Who do you think controls nature? God. So if that's how powerful nature is, God's even more powerful. And that stone rolled away, and out came Jesus Christ, the Son of God, glorified in power and victory. Mm -hmm. And because He lives, Amen. we can live also. Mm -hmm. I don't have to apologize to Jesus. He's the best thing that ever happened to me. Amen. He's the best thing that ever happened to you. He's the best thing that ever happened to this world. And He's coming again. And the world, ready or not, here he comes. When I was a little boy, we played hide and seek on C Street. I'm, I'm in that group on Facebook that says, you know you're from Paducah when? And all these people come out of the woodwork. And I'm thinking, did y'all grow up in the same town I did? You know? <laughs> then I got thinking, well, they're, they're a generation or two before me, I, you know, in front of me. We're talking about Henry Clay School. Elementary school that I went to, my dad went there, mom went there, brother went there, I went there, uncle went there, only oh, blocked my house. And uh, tore it down, but not the memories. And, and talking to those people on Facebook, they remember all these strange things that I had forgotten. They kind of, oh, yeah, I remember that, I remember that, yeah. And then they get things wrong, too. You know? And, and one of them said, well, you know, I enjoyed going to Henry Clay. Is my best middle school. And I said, hello? It wasn't a middle school, it was an elementary school. Where'd you go? <laughs> you see, everybody else had a grave problem. But not Jesus. Even today, when you put a body in the grave, that spirit of it belonged to Christ started going to heaven. And that body that's in the grave is going to come out one day and be glorified. And the old spiritual call that at getting up morning. That great getting up morning. And Carter, one day, we don't know when it's going to be, one day, Christ's going to come back for you and me in the church. And we're going to be glorified and resurrected. Those bodies in the grave are going to come out of those graves. Those of us who are alive are going to be caught in the air together. And we're all going to be transformed and glorified and go with Jesus Christ back to heaven. I'm as sure that's going to happen as I'm standing here. But now the world's not sure of that. <laughs> Just like they weren't sure of the resurrection. So I want you as a member of Connection Church to understand. You have the gospel. You have the power. You have the direction. And you have the mission. 
The mission is for us to tell other people through our lives, through our spoken word, that Jesus died for them, was buried for them, and arose for them. And only through the gospel of Christ will you be transformed and fixed out of your brokenness. I pray today that you'll understand that the gospel is for you to carry with you personally. Father God, we come.